Hi, my name is Aaron Schwartz, and I am with Group 9 for the City Citizen Science Project with Emily Jordan, Sarah Nursasov, and Anthony Bavona. And uh, what we together looked at is the Backyard World's Planet 9 database. Um, and so what this database involves is attempting to classify um, dipoles and movers. And what a dipole in this instance is, is... So what this database shows you is, is an infrared spectrum um, taken of one little bit of space. And since the images are so grainy and taken with such a high amount of contrast, it generally is... Um, it fools um, computer uh, models which attempt to find the dipoles or movers. Um, so it does require a human eye, which is where um, my group comes in. So what we do is we attempt to identify um, the dipoles and movers. And while one person's uh, identification doesn't mean much, if a bunch of people all make the same identification, then it's worth looking at. And together we can see if we can spot, spot the next um, planet or a low mass star. Um, so we are looking for um, the closest star to the sun and together we might be able to find it. Um, and it's hypothesized that we could find the ninth planet, which some models do suggest appear, um, but we're still searching for it. So what the dipole represents is one star um, coming in coming in between our Earth and that star. So it's one object that may be orbiting around it or may be in close proximity to it, but either way it's blocking or partially blocking the light which is why you see in those four frames it either um, makes a moon-shaped cookie or it just blocks it out for a second and then it reappears in the same place. The reason that we're looking in the infrared is that um, it is believed that brown dwarfs usually glow in the infrared and that this hypothesized planet 9 would also be glowing in the infrared. Um, so the images that we're looking at are actually taken about five years um, over a span of five years. Um, and so these images are then just spliced together to make it easier for the human eye to detect a pattern. So one of the reasons that um, this database um, has been shown to work is that in 1930, um, a man by the name of Clyde Tombaugh, apologies for that pronunciation, um, discovered Pluto using um, this same technique before um, even a computer was around. Um, so what he did was um, he would um, rapidly try to look through different photographic plates to see a pattern and what he found was Pluto. Um, and that took 7,000 hours, um, but now it's much easier. Um, and that's why we have this database and hopefully with using combined um, the human computing power, we might be able to find the ninth planet if it is out there. So I concluded with the rest of the people who worked on this project that the classifications were pretty hard because it's very subjective identifying what may be something. So what made this particularly hard was that the images were especially grainy and we weren't looking at the visible spectrum. We were looking at infrared images. Um, and so I went back and put those same coordinates that we were looking at into Google Earth and looked at a visible spectrum, um, as well as I looked at different infrared spectrums, and I noticed how grainy this particular one was, um, which really made it more difficult to identify any type of um, thing that was going on because it's such a pixelated image. Um, but I do feel like we made a slight amount of difference. Um, I myself made about 75 classifications um, and I do believe that I was, I did my best to make sure that they were dipoles and not just pixels, um, but I'm not really sure. Um, so I look forward to seeing where this database goes in the future.